Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, welcome to the first episode of my YouTube or the YouTube version of Global Arena. Remember, it used to be a radio show aimed at focusing and analyzing the biggest diplomatic issues of our time. Now on YouTube, the show will continue hosting experts from different corners of the globe to talk us through different issues of diplomatic concern. And um, well, this show was recorded via Zoom on Wednesday, the 31st of August, 2022. And I'm your host, Umar Isa Nando. Well, my guest today is an international celebrity in the media industry, a broadcast journalist, a producer at one of the biggest international media organizations. Osman Ali Uba is working for the Turkish main news channel, that is TRT World, which is based in that captivatingly wonderful, amazing and beautiful city of Istanbul. Apart from being him a producer, he also gives analyses, well, in plural, analyses of some of the biggest stories coming out of the continent of Africa. Let's say like the 2019 elections in Nigeria and the Turkish president's visit to Africa. Usman Ali Uba is also a PhD candidate at the Department of Political Science and International Relations, Istanbul Aydin University. His research focuses on Turkey, China, and African countries. Well, he is on the show right here, right now via Zoom from Istanbul to talk us through a number of issues ranging from his work for TRT World News his life in Turkey, and of course, his research that focuses probably on the influence that these big powers, quote unquote, namely China and Turkey, are exerting on the continent. Is it positive or negative? And why is Africa being treated like a dumping ground, as some people say? Some even go on by saying, um, is, why is it treated as a testing ground? Well, um, will Africa as a continent start competing with the bigger continents like Europe, North America, and of course, Asia? Well, Usman Ali Uba joins me now via Zoom from Istanbul in Turkey. Thank you very much indeed for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Umar Isa Dendago. That's great. I have to say that... Uh, I am grateful because by just sending an email, I got a positive reply and you said, okay, you are in and we can talk about this stuff. Thank you once again. Um, it's my pleasure to be on so your show. So how is, yeah, that's great. How is TRT World there? Uh, TRT World, as you already introduced, it's one of the international broadcasting uh, company uh, which is a public institution, um, uh, state broadcasts. So we are doing our best uh, to change the narrative, um, uh, to change the narrative of what other international media, particularly from the West, are doing. So it's a marathon, and we're trying our best uh, to cope with all challenges and to do our best in order to deliver uh, the appropriate uh, message to our audiences. And that's great. Of course, um, in the course of the program, we will dig deep and talk about um, the roles of TRT and how it's reporting, especially the African events, African issues, and see whether or not what you have said about changing the narrative is playing out um, in the way the Africans are yearning and aspiring. Uh, so I hope I will soon pay you a visit there at TRT in Istanbul. I see you have a very nice studio there. Hopefully, we'll receive you one day. Hopefully, okay. we wish yeah. to see you. Okay, inshallah. Thank you very much, Indy. So let's dive deeply into the crux of the um, discussion. Um, please give us your brief biography. Who is Usman Ali Oba? Briefly, um, I'm Usman Ali Uba, born in Kano, uh, which is the um, northern part of Nigeria. I attended my primary school, my secondary school, uh, all in Kano State, before uh, I left the country in 20, uh, 2008. 
Um, I left Nigeria when I, after I got um, a scholarship here in Turkey. By the way, I'm going to use the the, the word Turkey instead of Turkey because we have um, changed our guideline in terms of um, calling Turkey. It's no longer Turkey, it's Turkey. So Why? we're using the Turkish language. This is uh, from the state's uh, uh, order. So mm. even all the international organization, including United Nations, you know, and mm. other uh, international bodies, they have already mm. approved this change of name. So we are no longer calling it a turkey because there's mm. an animal called turkey, which is not in that respect. But because we are using the language, we are using the language so that not to misinform people. So it's no longer turkey anymore. It's Turkey, all right. So I'm going through our interview. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. use I'm going to use the word the appropriate name, which is in Turkish, Turkey, all mm. right. So please uh, be informed. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of so, course, and thank you. I will also take note of that. What about the adjective form of the word that is Turkish? Yeah, do you Turkish, still maintain it? We we still maintain Turkish as Turkish. You can call you can say a Turkish person, Turkish official, but the name the name of the country is Turkey. Yes. Okay, that's that's great. Okay, thank you very much for the correction because I was mm. I was puzzled when I watched one of your news programs mm. and I found out that um, the presenters were all saying Turkey, yeah, Turkey. We, we've recently and, and I was like our, our guidelines, star guide in terms of pronunciation of the name Turkey to Turkey. Yes, and we have to respect that, of course. Yes, thank you for. Okay, so you went yeah. to yeah. Okay, continuing with my brief biography, I, um, I came to Turkey in 2008. I continued my high school here. There is a high school of divinity. I attended high school of divinity. After three years, I um, proceed to my university, which is degree uh, in sociology. So I, mm. I got my degree, uh, my BSc in uh, sociology. Um, after finishing my degree in sociology, I proceed to my master's uh, degree, which is in general journalism. So mm -hmm. I, I was captivated. I was, um, you know, um, mesmerized because uh, the reason I even joined the master's degree in journalism was because immediately after I finished my degree program in sociology, I got the op opportunity to start working with TRT World when it was first, you know, uh, open. It was first um, started its broadcast that was in 2015. So from the very first day, I was I was um, a journalist with TRT World from the very first launch, which we call it the soft launch. So, so we, we, we had the soft launch in 2015. I can remember mm. 1st of May 2015, there was a soft launch. And now it's more than seven years, uh, if we can uh, calculate it. Um, yeah, it's more than seven years. So I started working with TRT World from the very first day. Um, Congratulations. I, thank you so much. Yeah. You're so welcome. while working, I um, got the, even the chance to continue with my master's degree at Marmara University here in Istanbul. So I finished my uh, master's degree. While working, I also proceed to my PhD. Um, I'm still um, working now on my thesis. Um, hopefully in very few months, I will finish my uh, dissertation. Uh, I'm about to also finish my PhD while working at TRT World. Congratulations. So very soon we'll start calling you Dr. Osman Ali Yuba, inshallah. Hopefully, inshallah. And I hope I will be able to host you after you become a PhD holder, inshallah. It's, it's my pleasure, inshallah. So thank, thank you very much indeed. That, this is really significant, um, to be honest with you, but I, I'm particularly interested in how easy or tough has it been for you um, mixing and mingling studies, especially master's degree mm. and PhD with working for mm. one of the biggest international media organizations, say mm. TRT there. Mm. Um, uh... Honestly speaking, it's, it's very challengeable um, for someone who is working, especially uh, in the media sector. Um, journalism, um, it's really, it's a field which really needs, you know, hardworking um, people, hardworking in the sense that you have to be very flexible, flexible in terms of uh, adjusting your time, 
uh, journalism is just like working in the military. So you don't expect when things happen. Or you can not just say, oh, um, you can plan ahead of time. Okay, we have mm -hmm. election coming or we have this event coming, but all of a sudden things might change. So that's why you always have to be alert. You always have to be very flexible in terms of um, um, working schedule. So, and that's make it more challengeable uh, in the sense that uh, even if you want to work at the same time, uh, attend class, you definitely have to be extraordinarily hardworking. So it's not insurmountable. It's not something that is insurmountable. It's not a rocket science. Mm, However, yeah. it needs more yeah. efforts. So the more you put more effort and put it in mind, you have the intention that you carry it all along. You're going to study. You're also going to work. Um, I think it's, it's very uh, interesting uh, to say that you, you are hardworking and flexible in both academia yeah. and in your uh, professional um, setting. That's great. Of course, you used uh, some very interesting um, expressions in the English. I, 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 I remember when I was watching your videos on YouTube mm. and I said, that, okay, this guy is from Kano and he speaks very powerful English. I like it. So to add upon those phrases, insurmountable mm. rocket science. So maybe I could say this is not a brain surgery, of course. <laughs> I like this idiom also. Yeah. So, okay, another issue that, um, okay, this question has come directly from my friend. Of course, he has yeah, he is one of the reasons why I started um, watching TRT and following some of your programs. I will tell you some of my best programs, but uh, one of them is uh, um, The Newsmakers, first launched and started by Imran Garda. I think he's not with you, right? Is he there? Yeah, uh, Imran was the one of our first um, presenter who hosted the program Newsmaker, but um, he's no longer with us. But we have also strong, more strong journalists um, called Andre Sankey. She's one of our, yeah. you know, uh, idol, if you like, I, I may call her. She's yeah. one of our veterans. Mm. She's also a very experienced journalist. So, well, Imran started Newsmakers, but he's no longer with us. However, we also have um, one of the best brain um, in terms of international journalists, um, which is Andre Sankey. She's also very professional in doing her presentation yeah i yeah of course of course um one of the videos of yours that i watched last night was amazing um was it the 20th election or the other one visit uh turkish visit i mean turkish friends visit to nigeria um she was the one asking you questions i'm just thinking and i really um got to be interested in in her which is very tough uh, i can also remember when i watched when she hosted danny ireland for um israeli uh, was it uh, foreign minister i think or for israeli ambassador to the united states uh, he's, he's a controversial israeli politician of course i remember when she hosted him um after Ramadan, talking about uh, the, um, what do you call it, um, Israeli-Palestinian crisis, of course, she was really, really great in asking the questions and putting the right questions to the right person. And she was fair and balanced, of course. Is she Turkish? Um, so uh, TRT World is an international media company which embraced diversity, you know, irrespective of being Turkish or, you know, uh, American, British, Indian, Pakistani, Nigerian. Uh, we are a diverse company with multiculturalism uh, in the sense that uh, this is mm. richness. The more you have diversity in your company, in where, especially in media outlets, the more you deliver the message to the right people. So, um, I mean, Andrew Sankey, um, even if she's a Turkish or not, which she's American, um, if you want to know, she's American given mm. her background. So, yeah, but she's doing her best um, to tell, uh, to be balanced. And this is all what we are struggling. We are all doing uh, what we can uh, to deliver the message because we are all messengers and we're trying our best to be uh, balanced, to be unbiased. Uh, to be fair uh, and to treat the story um, uh, fairly uh, in order to deliver the right 
uh, message the right news to our international audiences. Yeah, of course, that's really significant, of course. So um, my friend Mohammed Abdesalam Yakase, mm -hmm. an avid um, watcher of TRT, asked me to put this question. How did you get to TRT World? I mean, how did you start working? Like, did you apply or they just went to your school and they saw some talent on you? They just picked you up or you had someone there on the inside who helped you? It's, it's a procedure here. Um, whenever you are looking for a job, you have to first apply. Um, you have to first apply. And if you get a reply, and then they will arrange an interview with you and you have to defend yourself. You have to tell them why you went to work with them. So if you remember, like I mentioned earlier in the beginning, I got the opportunity immediately when I finished my degree program in sociology. And that was when TRT World was about to to launch, to be launched in 2015. Um, in early months of 2015, um, I got uh, the news that uh, TRT World is about to start its broadcasting. And, and a friend actually who we went to a certificate program in journalism, in broadcasting for a few months, recommended the idea to me, why can't I apply for that? So and. Um, I applied, I applied, I submitted my resume, my qualification. Of course, then I was a young journalist. Um, I haven't got the, you know, much background. That was seven years ago, like I have now, um, but I was very enthusiastic. I was very um, interested in uh, working with, especially TR2 World, because I had a lot of its visions, missions, how it's going to, you know, uh, counter, uh, the, the Western narrative um, um, of, of the way of broadcasting news. So that was one of my interests in being part of it. So I applied in 2015, early 2015, and I got the opportunity to be invited to the interview. I attended the interview and I finally got the job. And I, uh, since then, I am still working with TRT World and I haven't regretted for once, you know, because I'm very, very grateful uh, to my managers, to the company, for all the uh, skills and experience I have um, been, you know, uh, acquiring since then. And I have acquired a lot, to be honest. So first, you have, uh, it's, it's through application and then interview. And yes. when you are lucky, especially when you are qualified to get the job, then mm. you've been hired and you, you got the job. Okay, that's good. I mean, it, um, are you among those who created the African service of um, the TRT? I know you call it, uh, that is a program that you call Africa Matters, right? Are you the one who created it? Um, uh, so it's not my main idea. Uh, we have um, the input department. Uh, under the input department, we have the planning and under the planning, we have several desks, including the African desk. Of course, I have worked with Africa desk and especially with the planning from the very beginning. Uh, that was in 2015, 2016, 2017. I've worked with the planning, uh, first inputs uh, planning and then on the planning, the Africa desk. Um, sometimes we pitch stories, especially I from Nigeria, who is very interested in African countries. Um, I pitch stories about Africa, you know, about stories which we want to, you know, broadcast on TRT world. So uh, from the very beginning, while I was working on the Africa desk as an African producer, as well as a planning producer, we pitch stories. And it was one of the ideas we always pitch to our managers, like we should have a, an independent uh, African desk, an independent Africa show. Um, although we have uh, the, the, the top executive producers because there is a hierarchy you as a producer you cannot execute even if it's your idea you cannot ex ex execute it as someone who is at the top of you right so you may pitch you may bring an idea but at the end there might be an executive producer whose idea is more stronger than yours and who's um who's have the capability to also even push it forward for it to uh, be realized. So yeah, I worked with the African debts um, in the beginning. Um, 
And I, I, I can say that I worked also with the Africa Matters. We call it Africa Matters. It's a show which is um, focusing on African politics, African you know, society, um, a weekly show. Um, so I also contribute to the show in terms of packaging um, or analysis. Um, but yeah, it's someone's idea. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's really good. But you have really been um, uh, part and parcel of the process right from the start, as you have um, explained. 